Later on when I was about 16. Something happened to us fishing. I know we've been out trout fishing a lot on the river. Um, and the place that was best to fish was always right near the epicentre. In other words, where they um, lived. Which was a, a point which was about 30 feet from the bank on the other side of the river. Um, why that was the best place to fish? I think it was probably because a lot of leftovers from the meals were thrown into the river. I think the river was their refuse system. And I know that because a lot of the times when we arrived there in a group to play, we would see, or I would see, stuff floating down the river. Um, well, there wasn't a lot of activity upstream, so it was unlikely that it was anything else. Uh, one of the things I saw was what looked like an inverted bird of some sort. I don't know what kind of bird. But all you could see was this ball of what looked like remains with feathers sticking out of it. The feathers were above the waterline and it was floating down the river. And it looked a bit disgusting. Obviously it wasn't cooked. Um, so I figured out, rightly or wrongly, that what they were doing was getting, um, capturing a bird, however, or finding a dead bird, um, splitting it open. Obviously a bird you don't want to spend time, I mean, we defeather them and all the rest of it. I think what they would have done was uh, skin it and to skin a bird the easiest way is to open it up at the chest and then peel the skin back and then you can munch away on the insides um, and I think a lot of the time we would disturb them I'm presuming that they were eating a meal and we would come along sort of early evening after school and they would um, tidy up quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. Tidy up their meals by throwing it in the river and running for cover. And I know that actually happened because one time I got in front of the group specifically for the reason of discovering whether they were actually using the field where we played. So I got in front of the group as we arrived, so in other words, before our heads came over the horizon and before, just before we were in uh, view of the area that I suspected they used. And as my head, or in other words, as I was just able to see that area, which was an old on Google Earth and it's 450 metres, roughly, roughly I can't the, the ground's made a lot recently, um, but I would estimate 450 metres. And I could see something move across the field. It was barely discernible, there was definitely something there. 
um, but we'll see a, more of a shadow than the actual body itself. It was that well camouflaged. And it moved across the field. It would have been near to the bank, probably only about 30 feet. And it moved towards the bank and the river and dropped into the river. And I don't I don't think I saw it actually wading across the river, so whether it hid under the bank I don't know. But it probably would have gone across the river at some point. Um so that was that. Um sorry not about finished. At that time um I'll come to this later on. Um, but at that time, a few others of our group were actually looking. Um, and this was unusual, it took many years for them to, to come on to the idea that there was something in that area. Um, so we were all kind of looking for evidence. Um, it may not have been out of ball at that time, it may have just gone down for that specific reason, I can't remember exactly what we did afterwards. Um, so, I marked the spot where I saw this figure cross over the water, or into the, towards the bank. And once we'd walked over to the area, I had a good look. And the others were behind, they were looking at other things. Um, and I was ahead. So when I got to this point where I saw it, of the rough area, I had to look in the grass to see if there was any signs of uh, movement in the grass. But I couldn't see anything. And then I checked the where it went uh, down the bank into the river and looked down there and there was a tiny bit of sand on the side of the river where it accumulates you won't call it a sand bank it was just like a, a small amount of sand at the, at the side and in that sand was a footprint Um, and it was a big, a big foot, you know, if it was an adult foot, it would have to be someone with size 13 feet. The heel and part of the foot was above the water line, but the toes were beneath the water line, so I couldn't see much, I could just about make out the toes. So the water had kind of filled into the, the footprint, but the heel, I think, the heel wasn't actually in, in water, if you know what I mean, the water hadn't filled the full footprint, there was still some above the, the water line. Um, it looked like it was soft sand, I almost said oh, it must have been soft sand because it was about three inches deep. Now if, if a person had stepped on that sand, you wouldn't have gone down three inches. Is it three inches? I don't know, could have been two. Um, it wasn't soft sand, it was, it was solid. Um, and I know that because I checked recently. Um, sand on a sandbank will sometimes be soft. I suppose it's the way it accumulates. But this sand on the side of the river, I mean, it's a river where it runs fairly straight. It's not a river where you would get eddies. That's another place where you would get a soft sand. You get the soft material accumulating and it would stay soft 
this was hard. It was solid. Like you get on a beach sometimes, you know, when you're working on a beach, you'll get solid sand and then you'll get soft sand and then you'll get uh, quick sand. And, but this was solid. Um, and that was kind of the first physical evidence and the only physical evidence that I'd ever seen and you saw things and you experienced things and you heard things but that was the first physical evidence and I tried to um, find in footprints in recent times I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing um, which is strange because there are sandbars sandbanks all over the place so I presume they know not to leave footprints um, and that led me to think well if they're not leaving footprints how are they doing it and then I noticed stones have been stones that hadn't washed you know hadn't been washed along by the river in flood. They looked like they'd been placed. And I thought, oh, I wonder if they're using stepping stones. Um, and I remember one of these stepping stones was a bit wobbly, so I put some stones on it one time I visited. And the next time I went, they went there. And it was out of the water, it wouldn't have been the water that had um, knocked them off. So I don't know. Uh, where was he up to? How many minutes is that? 12 minutes. Um, so other things that were floating down. One time there was a large fleece of some sort, I don't know what it was, and I didn't want to get in the river and get hold of it because it looked disgusting. Um, and debris as well. Sometimes there was debris floating down. But like I said, there was nothing much upstream, so it was, unlike, it was unusual to see anything floating down. It was a very clean river. Um, and that debris was specific to the epicenter of where they lived. I won't go into what exactly it was. Um, so they'd obviously scarpered when they'd seen us coming. They must watch, must have been watching the pathways because there wasn't many access points into that area. There was one main one and there was kind of another one two and possibly a third but the other two were very unlikely to be used. Um, I'm just trying to think, could they find a spot to hang out where they could see all the access points? They probably could, and they probably would have. And I know that because the time when my head went over that horizon, it was literally moving as soon as I was able to view that area be with me. As soon as my head came over the horizon, it was moving. So it must have had its eyes on that point. It was probably used to us arriving anyway. And that led me to think that that's how they, they never get seen. Because they're very careful. And their eyesight is phenomenal. Um, I had 
very good eyesight. I mean, you try and look at an animal from 450 meters, you go out and look at, say, a deer or a fox at 450 meters, um, you'd struggle. I don't think I could do it now. Last time I saw a fox was probably about 200 meters away. Just, um, we just don't see that far. Um, and at night time, their eyes are so much better than ours. And I'll go into that later, but they could see at night. I could see, the young one could see, if I'd seen her. Are you with me? They would, they would watch everyone, I'm, I'm not presuming, they would watch, she would watch our faces and as soon as one of us started looking over at her, she would know that she'd been spotted. So she, she learned um, the light levels that were safe and the light levels that were, were, were not safe. And that's how, that's how she did it most of the time. But she was, she was very young. She was about the same age as the youngest in the group. I estimate it's difficult to know the ages. Um, and a bit like um, people who have um, teenagers who have a ghost spurt around 13, 14. I think she had a, a ghost spurt at that time because she was always stood up. She was a foot lower than me. Well, I was quite a tall kid. And then when we got to about 15, 16, she was, I think it was her, I mean, it was hard to say. Um, I've often thought, was there more than, than this little one? Were there others? Because each time you saw them, they were... The fur was different, sometimes it was clean, sometimes it was dirty, sometimes it was matted, sometimes it was wet, sometimes it looked like they'd been rolling around in mud. So each time we saw them, it was, they looked different, um, you know, on the outside. And then, as she got older, she had this growth spur, and so you weren't sure what you were looking at. Was it an adult or was it the young one that had shut up? Um, but I think I've figured that out now. I think I've, I've realised that it was a grand spur. And because the adult one, which I haven't mentioned yet, but I'll come to that. And the only time when it appeared to flow in the wind, so I presume that was the only time it was clean, and the cover was um, I've heard strawberry blonde before now, and I've heard amber, so it was that kind of colour. Like a brown colour. Beige. Beige. I suppose even when it was clean, it wasn't fully clean. Um, the 
it used to be there a lot to travel. It was always in the in the river. I saw her a few times in the river. Um, so they did have a, a, a wash of sorts. Okay, uh, I'll leave it there. Bye. <laughs>